So before we look at lesson 6.6, .6, I'm going to go over the basics of what y equals sine x equals and what y equals cos x equals. So if we took a, take a look at the five most important points, these are the five most important points splitting up one full cycle to five points because one cycle is 0 to 360 just like in unit 5. And if we plug in sine of 0, we're going to get 0. Sine of 90 is 1. Sine of 180 is 0. Sine of 270 is negative 1. And sine of 360 is 0. That's just using our calculators. And of course, if we go to graph y equals sine x, what does that look like? Well, it starts at 0, and it looks something like this with the five key points. Okay, And um, of course, I'm just drawing just a quick graph here but it is a curve not straight lines there is curves to this so what does this look like it starts in the in the middle it goes up to the highest point then it goes back to the middle goes to the lowest point and then back to the middle those are the most important points of any sinusoidal function where the middle is and of course the highest point and the lowest point so this is what the graph or one cycle of the graph y equals sine x looks like. How does that compare to y equals negative sine x? So y equals negative sine x looks just a little different than this. What is different about it? Well, the fact that there's a negative out in front, that means your a is negative. And we know that if a is negative, this is a reflection, just like it is when we're dealing with a parabola or any other function. It's a reflection in the x-axis. Okay, So if I were to come up with a table of values for y equals negative sine x, it would look much like y equals sine x. The only difference is it would be a reflection in my x-axis. All my y values would become negative. If I did plug in 0... 90, 180, 270, and 360, these would be my answers. If I plugged in a 0 in here, I would get uh, y equals 0. If I plugged in a 90 there, if I did sine of 90, it's 1, but there's a negative out in front, so it would be negative 1. Plug in 180, I would get 0. Plug in 270, I would actually get positive 1 if I plug it into this formula, and sine of or sorry, negative sine of 360 is also equal to zero. So if I went to go and graph that graph, um, and I'll make that graph right underneath, it's going to look much like this graph here. It's going to look like the exact same shape. However, it's flipped upside down. It's going to start at the middle. It's going to go to the lowest point first, then back to the middle, then the highest point, and then back to the middle. And it's going to follow a curve. So it'll be one full cycle. This is y equals negative sine. And then we'll do the same for y equals cos x and y equals negative cos x. If I plug in 0 into this formula here for a cos x, uh, cos of 0 is equal to 1, cos of 90 is equal to 0, cos of 180 is equal to negative 1, cos of 270 is 0, and then cos of 360 is 1. So if I were to graph that and just graph one full cycle, it's going to start at 1, go down to 0, go to negative 1, back to 0, and back up to 1. So the graph will look like this. Again, it's going to follow the exact same curve or the same curvature as what y equals sine x has. All of these uh, functions are embedded in each other. So if I were to graph y equals negative cos, it's going to just be a reflection in the x-axis. And, you know, I can come up with the table of values here. And I would get this table of values right here. Now, if I were to graph that, how is that different than the coast graph? Well, you're going to start not at the highest point, but you'll start at the lowest point. Go to the middle, 
then to the highest point, back to the middle, and back to the lowest point. So it's going to look like the upside down version of the coast graph. Okay, so that's what y equals negative coast graph looks like. Why are these graphs important? They're important when you go to do word problems so you know what type of graph you're looking at. Remember, these graphs are all embedded inside of each other. And I'll show you what I mean about that later. Now, the sine graph, the first graph, the first cutout you can have, starts off in the middle, goes to the highest point, then to the middle again, then to the lowest point, and then back to the middle. I'll extend this a little bit. And so this graph will look something like this. Okay, so it starts at the middle. Okay, so what does negative sign look like? The negative sign looks like a reflection of the regular sign. So it starts in the middle, but then instead of going to the highest point, it goes to the middle, sorry, to the lowest, back to the middle, to the highest, and then to the middle again. So it looks something like this. That is the negative sign graph. Then if we take a look at the coast graph, what does the coast graph look like? Well, the coast graph starts at the highest point, then comes to the middle, then to the lowest point, then back to the middle, and then to the highest point again. And this is one full cycle of what a coast graph looks like. And the last one, what does the negative coast graph look like? So negative coast graph would just look like a reflection in the x-axis. It would start at the lowest point, go to the middle, highest point, back to the middle, and then to the lowest point. And this is one full cycle of an upside down or a negative coast graph. Your job is to look at, for any of these cutouts here and know what you're dealing with. For instance, you may have a graph that looks like this. Now, depending on what you want to cut out here, um, you can actually look at this graph and you could find a positive sign graph in here. You could find a negative sign graph in here. You could find a positive coast graph and you could find a negative coast graph here. I mean, if you wanted, if you were very adamant about finding the first sign graph you saw here, I mean, you can cut out the sign graph by, remember what a sign graph looks like. It looks like it starts in the middle and then it goes to the highest point, back to the middle, lowest, and then uh, back to the middle. So that is a cutout, for instance, in the green is a cutout of a sign graph. If you wanted an upside down sign graph, I mean, there's plenty of places where you can cut up cut out an upside down sign graph, but I will cut out an upside down sign graph starting at this point here. And in yellow, this would be an upside down sign graph beginning right here. And uh, of course, you could um, go on and on. Uh, maybe you want to cut out the first right side up coast graph you see. That would start here, let's say, and go up to here so you could start a positive coast graph right there you can also uh, if you looked at where it starts where the actual graph starts the actual graph starts right here and that starts at the lowest point so the most correct thing to cut out here would be an upside down coast graph because it starts at zero and we'll explain more about this later that would just be so your equation doesn't have a d value a shift left or right but it really doesn't matter as you can cut out any of these four graphs. They're all within each other. So I went into Google Drive and opened up your lesson on 6.6. .6. So let's take a look at example 1a. Determine the equation of the follow, following sinusoidal functions. So in order to determine that, you're going to have to come up with this information here. The equation of the axis, amplitude, period. Easiest way to come up with the equation of the axis is knowing where your highest point is, which we do. Our highest point is 1, and our lowest point. Our lowest point is 5. So we know what the highest point of the sinusoidal function is and the lowest point is. So we can figure out the middle between these two numbers because the middle between any two numbers is you would add those two numbers together and divide by 2. So I'll go 1 plus negative 5 and then divide it by 2. 1 plus negative 5 is negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. The middle is y equals negative 2. So this 
is the equation of the axis, y equals negative 2. So you could have filled that in over here, y equals negative 2. Okay, what is the amplitude? Well, let's go back and remember what the amplitude is. The amplitude is half of the entire height, or the amplitude is always from the middle to the highest point, or the middle to the lowest point. The amplitude in this case, if we count from the middle to the highest point, is a distance of 3. Or the middle to the lowest point is also a distance of 3. So the amplitude is 3. The period. How do we find one period? Well, it's important that we cut out one of the graphs, one of the four graphs that we have seen. Now, we could extend this graph if we need to, um, but if we don't have to, we won't. Uh, if we cut out an entire graph, uh, let's say um, positive coast graph. If we look for a positive coast graph here, I mean, I could find one very easily. A positive coast graph looks like a U. It starts at the highest point. Okay, so this looks like a positive coast graph. Now, the period would be the distance for this entire positive coast graph, right? You don't have to cut this out. You can cut out a positive sine graph, a negative sine graph, or a negative coast graph. Either way, the period's going to be the same. It doesn't matter what you cut out. And the distance from negative 270, right, from this point here, all the way to 90, that is a distance of 360. So the period is 360. So now we're going to come up with the equation of this sinusoidal function. Now, you can come up with so many different equations for the same sinusoidal function. It's very important you understand that. It depends on what you've cut out. Now, you don't have to cut out the positive coast graph. You could uh, make the cutout right from where the graph starts. So if you chose to start right at zero, I mean, the graph that is here right at zero, you'd have to extend it a little bit, but the graph is actually a sine graph. Okay, so that yellow graph is y equals sine of x. So if you were to come up with the formula of what you first see, this yellow graph here, this is, you'd have to extend it a little bit, but this is y equals sine x. The period of that yellow graph is still 360, by the way. Um, and the axis, the equation of the axis is still y equals negative 2, amplitude is still 3. If you want the equation of this, the final answer, remember for any graph, you always have an a value. We know it's sine. Uh, you may have a k value, okay? We have x minus d. You may have a d value, and you may have a c value as well. Remember, sinusoidal functions have all the transformations that every other um, function has. So let's remind ourselves where all the numbers go, okay? So y equals, the first thing is this is a positive sine graph. So we know that my a value is a positive number because this is a regular sine graph, this thing in yellow. Now, a is also the amplitude, okay? So the amplitude always goes here, so a is 3. We know it's sine, we know it's positive sine. How do we figure out what our k value is? Well, remember how you find k. k always has something to do with the period. Now, k is always found by doing the period is normally 360 for one full rotation divided by what our period is now. And our period now is 360, so we're going to divide it by 360. And so our k value is actually just a 1. I mean, we don't have to write a 1 here. Um, that's not necessary. If you want to write the one there, you can write the one there, but I am not going to write the one there. So um, we know that k is 1. And x minus d, what is our d value? d means that this thing is shifted to the left or the right. There is no shift here because this starts. I mean, we're starting this graph at 0. This is one full rotation here. Okay, so it starts at 0, so it, there is no rotation to the left or to the right or sorry, shift. Uh, so y equals 3 sine 1x. There is no d. 
and then plus your C value. Your C value, you should remember, is always what your equation of the axis is. So in this case, your C value is negative 2. So let me just erase this positive sign, and I will replace it with negative 2. Okay, so this is the correct formula for this if you chose to cut out the first thing that you see. How about what I said regarding there's so many equations for the exact same picture? So remember, no matter what picture you cut out, the equation of the axis is y equals negative 2, amplitude is 3, and period is 360. It doesn't matter what you cut out. But let's say someone didn't want to cut out a sine graph. Let's say you stuck with what I did at first, and you cut out the first thing you saw, which was a coast graph. Okay, how does that change the formula? So let's take a look at that. So if I were to cut out the coast graph, and the first coast graph that I see is right here, okay, it doesn't start at zero. It's very important you see that this coast graph starts over here on this point, which is 270 to the left. This is a coast graph. It's a positive coast graph. Okay, so this is a y equals positive cos x. So it's very important you understand, once again, that all of these functions are embedded in each other. Cos, negative cos, sine, negative sine, they're all within each other. How would I come up with, with the equation for that cutout right there? I mean, it doesn't matter what you cut out. Like I said, the equation of the axis is still going to be negative 2. The amplitude is still going to be 3, and the period is th still going to be 360. However, if you chose to cut out a coast graph, remember, all of these transformations can occur to the coast graph. Uh, y equals A, cos of K, X minus D, if there's a shift to the left or right, and then you have this plus C. So if I were to come up with the equation of this, let's fill in the blanks. Y equals, remember, this is a positive coast graph. So my A is going to be positive. Now my amplitude is 3, so I put a 3 here. Cos, because we know it's positive cos. Now my K value. My K value is found the exact same way as it's always found, right here. We already found that. 360 is normally the period by, divided by the period now, which is 1. So k is 1. I'm not going to write the 1. And then x minus d. Well, let's take a look at this. Is there a shift? Yes, there is. There is a shift. This thing starts to the left by 270. So we know that if it's a left by 270, this is x plus 270, right? Because left is negative, so x minus negative 270. So x plus 270. And then my c value is negative 2. So there is a formula for the exact same sinusoidal function. Which formula is best? I mean, you can also do a negative cos. You can do a negative sine. But which formula is best? Which formula is best is the one that does not have the d value. I mean, for me, I do not want to have more numbers than I need. So I would prefer, you know, cutting out... Uh, from the zero, that's what I did. So from the zero, what do I see? It starts in the middle. I mean, we just had to extend it a little bit, but that is a right side up sine graph. I challenge you to try to come up with a formula for a negative coast graph here and a negative sine graph here as well. And how do you know your formula is correct? Well, your formula, you can know if your formula is correct very easily because you have a table of values for this function. I mean, we know that at zero, the no matter what formula you're using, the answer better be negative 2 for y. If you input a 90 in for x, we know that it gives you the maximum, which is 1. We know that if you input 180, you're back to the middle, which is negative 2. We know that if you input 270, the output better be the lowest number, which is negative 5. And then if you input 360, and that's very easy to see because these are going up by increments of 90 here, uh, you are back to the middle, which is negative 2. This is the repetitive pattern right here. Negative 2, 1, negative 2, negative 5, negative 2, 1, negative 2, negative 5, negative 2, 1, negative 2, negative 
five, and it's always going up by increments of 90. Okay, these are repetitive patterns, sinusoidal functions. So let's look at question B and what we're dealing with here. So if you take a look at this table of values here, I'm going to actually just graph it just so I can see it a little better. So I am going up over here. If you look at this, I'm going up by increments of six. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go negative six, then negative 12, negative 18, and negative 24. So all of those are going up by increments of six. I mean, if I had to extend the graph, I can extend the graph to the positives as well and go up by increments of six as well. Um, then let's take a look at all the heights. I mean, the lowest height that I see is zero and the middle height I see is a negative six. And then the, I guess the um, lowest height I see is negative 12. That should make sense because if you look at the distance from the middle to the highest point, it's a distance of six and middle to the lowest point is a distance of six. Now let's fill in the blanks here. If I were to fill out um, what I see here, I have negative 24, negative six. I have negative 18, zero. Then I have negative 12, negative six. I have uh, negative 6, negative 12, and then I have 0, negative 6. So this is what that information has given me. That does look like one complete cycle. Actually, that looks like the sine graph because the sine graph always starts at the middle height. Remember, this is the middle height. Okay, it starts at the middle height, goes up to the maximum, back to the middle, to the lowest, and then back to the middle. I can extend this graph if I wanted to, so that's what I'm actually going to do. Um, once again, we know that the middle is y equals negative 6. We know the lowest height, and we know the maximum height, okay? So we could extend this graph. Starting here, I can. it starts in the middle, then goes up to the highest, then goes to the middle, down to the lowest, and back to the middle all while going up by increments of six. So we could extend this graph forever and ever and ever. The reason why I've extended that graph is because I would like to make this cutout, the blue cutout, because starting at zero, there will be no D value. There will be no shift left or right. You don't have to do this, but that's what I'm going to do. So let's take a look at answering all the equa uh, the questions. Our equation of the axis is y equals negative six. Our amplitude is always from the middle to the highest point. And in this case, the amplitude, the middle to the highest point, that distance is six or middle to the lowest point. So that's also a six. The period, the period is one full cycle. You can measure the full cycle in the blue or the red, it doesn't matter. The period is the period. In this case, the period um, is from 0 to 24, so that's 24. I don't know if this is seconds or whatever, but that's what the period is. The period is 24. And now, and we also know that this blue cutout is a positive sine graph. Once again, that is what I am choosing because there is no shift left or right if I start at 0. You can choose the red graph, which is also a positive sine graph. You can try to cut out a uh, positive coast graph, negative coast graph, negative sine graph. It really doesn't matter what you choose. All of these things are going to be the same except for what graph you're choosing and then whether or not there is a D value or not. So let's come up with the formula. Uh, remember the formula has every sine graph has an A in front of it. There are you have to take into consideration the k value, the x minus d, and also the c. Filling in the blanks, y equals, it's a positive sine graph, so this a value will be positive. We know that the amplitude is 6, that's what always goes there. Amplitude is 6, sine of, what is my k value? Well, k, remember, is not 24. K is figured out by doing what the period normally is, which is 360, divided by what the period is now, which is 24. So your K value is equal to 15. So K is always done 
by doing 360 divided by whatever the period is now. So k is 15. Now there is no d value because we are not shifting left or right. So I'll just leave d as 0. So I'll put an x. Now do you need to have brackets around here? You do not, but I'm going to put the brackets around there for now. And then plus my c value. c is always the equation of the axis. And the equation of the axis in this case is negative 6. So I'll erase this positive sign here. And I will put in minus 6. Okay? And so that is the correct formula. How do we know our formula is right or accurate? If I have some extra time on a test or whatever it is, um, of course, you know, we have a table of values up here. If you plug in any of these numbers for x, let's say x equals negative 6, if you plug that in to this formula here, you better get the answer of y equals negative 12. Again, this is what I chose. You could have chose the red graph, in which case you'd have a d value. Uh, you could have chosen, you know, coast graph or uh, upside down coast graph. I'm not going to go over the, all those with you, as I will always attempt to come up with the graph that starts at zero. So here's question C, and question C wants the equation of this as well. Again, we can look for any of those four cutouts. So I'm going to take what I see, start at zero, which starts at the maximum and does this. And from what I know, that there, this green graph, is a coast graph. Okay, once again, I know what the highest point is. The highest point is three. The lowest point is negative four. Okay, so this one's a little tricky, but where is the middle? Remember how you find the middle. The middle is the middle between those two points, between 3 and negative 4. So, of course, I'm going to add those two points together and divide by 2 so I can figure out the average. And the average is actually uh, 3 plus negative 4 is negative 1 divided by 2 is negative a half or negative 0 0.5. Okay, so negative 0 0.5 is the middle y equals negative 0.5 okay and then let's answer all the other questions here the amplitude is always the distance from the middle to the highest point and in this case the amplitude is from negative 0.5 all the way to 3 so the amplitude is 3.5 it's also from the middle to the lowest point so amplitude is half of the entire height or from the middle to the highest or middle to lowest and then what is the distance for one period so we know that the period is one cutout here it doesn't matter what cutout you pick but in this case from what I'm looking at here the period is equal to 90 no matter what the period's going to be 90 there okay so we have enough information we also know that this green graph is a positive cos graph so y equals cos x so let's come up with the formula remember for any of these graphs you can have an a value in front you can have a k value you have an x minus d if there's a shift left or right in this case there isn't because I always choose the one that doesn't have one and so let's fill in the blanks y equals it's a positive cos graph so it's definitely positive the amplitude is 3 0.5 so that's what goes there then I have cos of my k value how do I find my k value k value is always found the exact same way the k value normally the period is 360 but the period now is 90 so you're going to take 360 divided by 90 and so your k value will be equal to 4 so this will be a 4 x there is no d because there's no shift left or right we're starting at 0 and, of course, the equation of the axis is negative 0 0.5, okay? So, looking at this equation, other things to note. You know that this is the middle, and you know that this is the amplitude. The distance from the middle to the highest point is always the amplitude. 
So if I know that the middle, just looking at the formula, I, I could figure out what the highest and the lowest point are. Because if I take the middle, 0 0.5, and add 3.5, I get the highest as 3, which I know it's the highest. And if I do zero point, negative 0 0.5 minus 3.5, I get the lowest, which I know is negative 4. Again, we have a bunch of points that we could figure out if we're accurate with our formula. For instance, if I plug in 45, I better get this answer of negative 4 here if I plugged it into my formula. So you could check that out on your own. So moving on to 6.7, it says here, Tim has a model train that goes around a circular train track and Tim is standing directly south of the track. The following graph shows the train's distance north of Tim as a function of time. I mean, these word problems can give you the actual formula, or it may give you uh, a graph like this, it may give you a table of values, or it just may give you a scenario, and you have to come up with what the graph looks like. Luckily, the graph is here. I mean, we can figure out right away that the maximum height of this graph is 4.5, okay? And we know that the minimum height of this thing is this 0 0.5. So the first question, it says, what is the equation of the axis of the function? I mean, we could figure that out. The middle is always going to be the average of those two numbers. I mean, we could just count to the middle here. Most of us can just see it. However, if we just did 4.5, which is the highest, and add the lowest, which is 0 0.5, divide by 2, we could figure out the average is 2.5. Okay, so 2.5 is the middle of this graph. Okay, so this is y equals 2.5. That's the middle. Okay, so y equals 2.5. It's definitely going to be asking us and leading us to coming up with this equa uh, equation. It says, what is the amplitude of the function? What does it re represent? So the amplitude of the function. The amplitude of the function is always from the middle to the highest point. So in this case, the distance from the middle to the highest point is a distance of 2. So the amplitude is 2. What does it represent in this situation? It represents the distance from the middle to the furthest point, or the middle to the closest point. In this case, remember it says there's a circular train track. So the train track is a circle and it goes round and round and round and round. The distance from the middle to the highest point, that is also known as the radius. So that's the radius of this circle, of this circular track. Then it says, what is the period of the function? Well, the period of the function, this has a multiple um, periods here. So we're going to cut out the first thing we see. And the first thing that I see here, it starts at the lowest. So the first thing that I see is this cutout. And this cutout here is an upside down coast graph or a negative coast graph okay so i'm just going to write that down for reference so this is negative cos x that green cut out there now we know that the period is one of these cycles there's plenty of cycles here but the period in this case is equal to 30 seconds okay so the period is equal to 30 seconds what does that represent well, that represents one full cycle. What's one full cycle in this question? Well, this train, this model train, is going around a circle, okay? And it starts at the closest point, and it goes around and around and around until it gets back to the closest point. So that represents one full cycle, or one once that the train goes around the circle, okay? The next question asks us what the range is of this function. I mean, the range of the function should be fairly easy to come up with. We know the highest point on the graph is 4.5, okay? Y equals 4.5 is the highest. Y equals 0 0.5 is the lowest. That has nothing to do with your equation, but, you know, obviously you can come up with the range. So if I were to write the range properly, the range would be, um, and now remember that the y-axis is distance, so distance as a function of time is an element of all real numbers where distance as a function of time 
is greater than and equal to 0 0.5 but less than and equal to 4.5 so those are the only distances that that train can touch from 0 0.5 to 4.5 and it keeps uh, repeating itself over and over again so question E is asking us to determine the equation of the sinusoidal function so remember the cutout that I came up with is the one that I see first and what I see first is an upside down cosine graph so we know that this cutout that I've made is a negative cos x graph okay we also know that for any formula of cos you can have an a of course you can have a k you have x minus d and then you could have a plus c as well so let's fill out in the in all the information so we have y equals remember it's a negative cos graph so that's what i'm going to have here first negative then we know our amplitude remember that the middle point the middle was 2.5 the amplitude is always the distance from the middle to the highest point and the amplitude in this case was equal to 2 so i have negative and then i have a 2 here cos my k value how do you find k k is always found the exact same way you're going to do 360 divided by whatever the period is now and we know that the period is 30 so 360 divided by 30 you're going to k get that k is equal to 12 so that's what i'm going to put here and then x minus d there is no d because i am starting my graph at zero okay so starting at zero there is no shift left and right then i have my plus c value remember the equation of the axis is always my c value in this case the equation of the axis was y equals 2.5 so we know that my c value is 2.5 so this is my formula for anything that happens now obviously you can get a little bit better with the formula because we know that this is not y we know that this, this is distance as a function of time and we know that this is time for x so of course the most appropriate way to write this is distance as a function of time is equal to negative 2 cos of 12 t plus 2.5 and we could figure out any distance at any given time i mean it's asking us to plug in the time of 52 seconds because on your graph, I mean, 52 seconds, these are all going up by increments. If you look at that, it's not nice increments that it's going up by. Um, so where's 52, 52 seconds? We don't know. So we do kind of know where it is on the graph. But uh, just to check your formula, we can check. Because we know at time 0, for instance, your answer better be... 0 0.5 at time 30 your answer better be 0 0.5 at time 60 your answer better be 0 0.5 because every 30 seconds the same thing happens so we could plug in any of those 30 second increments and make sure that the y value is 0 0.5 if that's good to go then we could solve this by just plugging in a 52 for the t and coming up with your associated distance um, and so remember that Whatever you get for distance has to be a number in between 0 0.5 and 4.5 because all these sinusoidal functions have ranges. They have the lowest height and the maximum height. So all of your answers have to be between 0 0.5 and 4.5. So let's take a look at this 6.5 lesson plan. I'm pretty sure you have this as your example too. If not, we can copy this down and do this one. It asks us to sketch one cycle of this graph here. I mean, I'm going to use the five-point method, but um, I'm going to use transformations because that's what it wants us to, to use. So how am I going to graph this thing here? Okay, so how am I going to graph that? Number one, you got to see that this is actually not even written in correct form. This inside the brackets is not factored to have your K separate from your X minus D. So that's what I'm going to do first, actually. I'm going to rewrite this as y equals 4 cos and 
if I factor out a half between those two things, so if I factor out a half, if I factor out from the first thing, I'm going to get x and 90 divided by a half is positive 180. This is the correct way of writing this. And then you have this minus 1. If you redistributed this half in here, half times an x would give me my half x, and then half times 180 would give me my 90. This, though, is written in the correct form. Okay? y equals uh, 4 cos, and then in the brackets, half x plus 180 minus 1. So how am I going to graph this in stages? I mean, I'm going to show you um, maybe how to do it in one shot, uh, which is what your book would want you to do. So maybe um, doing all the transformations at once to five points. And so that's where I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to start off by using the most basic graph here, or the parent function, which is y equals cos x, because we're dealing with a y equals 4 cos blah, 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 blah. So y equals cos x. And we should know what y equals cos x looks like. For one full cycle of y equals cos x, I got 0 going up by increments of 90, 180, 270, and 360. And we know that cos of 0 is 1, cos of 90 is 0, cos of 180 is negative 1, 0, and 1. I just plugged those in. And so this is 5 points. These are the only 5 points I need. And I can continue this pattern as long as I want to the right and to the left. However, now I'm going to look at what my A value is, okay? What my K value is, what my D value is, and what my C value is. In this case, my A value is what's in front of the function, which is 4. My K value is a half. My D value is not 180, but negative 180. Because it's X minus 180. X minus negative 180. And then my C value is negative 1. So I'm going to attempt to apply all of these transformations in one shot to that table of values. Because that's what your this course would like you to be able to do at the end. So that's what we're going to do. So now, how does that change so that I get the final answer of y equals 4 cos a half x plus 180 and then minus 1? Okay, so how am I going to come up with the new points all in one shot? So it's important to understand what affects your y values, for instance. Our y values are affected by two numbers. First, obviously, our multiplication. Our y values are affected by the a, which is 4. So that is a vertical stretch by a factor of 4. So I'm going to vertically stretch all of my y values by 4 first. So multiply every single value by 4. And after I do that, there's also a vertical shift down by 1. So after I have multiplied by the 4, I'm going to shift this down by 1. After I multiply by 4, shift down by 1. You have to do the multiplication first, obviously. You have to do the stretch before you do the shift up or down. But those are the two numbers that affect my y value. So I'm going to take care of this in one shot. So let's take a look at the 1. 1 times 4 is 4. Minus 1 is 3. The next one, 0 times 4 is 0. Minus 1, negative 1. The next one, negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Minus 1 is negative 5. The next one. 0 times 4 is 0, minus 1, negative 1. And the last one, 1 times 4 is 4, minus 1 is 3. So those are my y values. That's the repetitive pattern. 
it goes 3, negative 1, negative 5, negative 1, 3, negative 1, negative 5, negative 1, and it continues doing that over and over again because we know this is a repetitive pattern. So that takes care of my y values. Now, how do I take care of my x values? My x values, what affects my x values? The k is something that affects my x values, and also the d is what affects my x values. So let's take care of the k first because the k is my horizontal stretch or compression. When k is a half, think about this, that is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. So I have to stretch every single one of these numbers by a factor of 2. So I erased all the y values so you wouldn't be confused. So I'm going to stretch these by a factor of 2, all of them. So I do that first. And then, of course, I am going to uh, apply my D value, which is shift everything to the left by 180. So I'm going to shift this afterwards to the left by 180 and all of them. So the first one I have 0 times 2 is 0 minus 180 is negative 180. Then I have 90 times 2, which is 180 minus 180 is 0. Then I have 180 times 2, 360 minus 180, 180. I don't have to continue doing any more math here because you can see, and you know from sinusoidal functions, as the pattern continues, your x increments are the same. You should be going up by the same x values. You should be going up by increments of 180. So I go up by 180. This should be 360. And this should be 540. So this is one full cycle for the new function. So let's graph that. So I'm going to plot one full cycle, this full cycle here. I've gone up by increments of 180 on my x-axis and up by increments of 1 on my y-axis and labeled important heights. So I have negative 183, so that would be right about here. Then I have 0, negative 1, right about there. I have 180, negative 5. I have 360, negative 1, and I have 540 and 3. So the graph will look something like this. That's for one full cycle. Again, just looking at the formula that they gave you at the beginning, this should all make sense because your amplitude is 4. You know that your middle number is negative 1. So I do know that the middle number is y equals negative 1. Okay, and I know my amplitude, which is the distance from, and I also know that my maximum is 3, my minimum is negative 5. The amplitude is always the distance from the middle to the highest point, and in this case, it is 4, or the middle to the lowest height, which is also 4. I know that this graph starts at 180 degrees to the left, which is true, it starts right there. I also know that it should look like a coast graph, which it does. Coast always looks like a U-shape, starts at the top. I also know that my period, my period right here, should be, and how do we figure out period if you're given the K value? That should be pretty simple. If they're giving you the K value, the period is just going to be 360 divided by my K, which is a half, or 0.5, and so my period is actually 720 degrees or seconds. This distance from here all the way to here is 720. It's 180 plus another 540. So this all makes pretty good sense to what this looks like. Uh, of course, we can continue this pattern and go on forever and ever and ever, forward and backward. And you can check um, to see that these points are accurate because you do have... A formula so if we plugged in 360 you better get negative 1 as your answer if you plugged in 540 you better get 3 as your answer as well